Welcome to today's D3 tutorial. Today we're going to be learning to make a simple pie chart using D3. On the left you can see the completed pie chart. And on the right you can see the code, what it'll look like when it's finished. Here I just have a simple HTML file. All I've included is the D3.js script and the main script that we have here. So let's get started. We're going to clear all this out. So the first step in making the pie chart is to define the size of the pie and the SVG. So we're going to define a few initial variables. We've defined the width, the height, which are both self-explanatory, and the radius, which is going to be the radius of the circle itself. Now we're going to define a set of data to use. I've chosen to use the numbers 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. You can use any numbers you want or if you don't want to figure out your own numbers, you can get the whole tutorial code at the URL that will appear at the bottom of the screen right now. <laughs> like magic. Now, we need to define a constructor to make a pie chart. So we're going to define a pie, d3.layout.pie. And this is going to make a cookie cutter that will turn any set of data into a pie. So we'll say ver stencil equals pie.data. Now if I type into the developer tools stencil, you can see it's transformed the data into a series of objects that D3 has done a bunch of complicated math for us to create these objects. But this will allow us to easily draw a pie chart in the next step. Now we're going to quickly append an SVG to the HTML element. So here we've appended the SVG and given it a width and a height equal to the width and height we defined earlier. Now we need to put a container inside the SVG or else the pie chart that we're about to draw won't be centered. So we'll say var container equals svg.appendg and we'll just move it into the middle there with that formula. All right, here's, here's the fun stuff that's going to happen. So now we're going to create a G element for every element in the array in the SVG. So basically, inside the SVG, we're going to open it up and put five tags that just say G in them. Then we take that data that we made earlier and we will combine it to those elements. So the stencil element over, over here, we're going to say um, that this se selection doesn't exist yet, but it's all these G's. We're going to say that there are now a number of G's equal to the elements in the data set, or five, and they're all going to have the data that's defined in the stencil.
All right, so if we look on the left here, nothing has happened yet. But if we look down into the HTML, we can see we have drawn SVG, and inside there are six of these little empty G elements, five of them, inside our centered box. Finally, inside each one of those Gs will append a path and we'll use the arc function. Well, we haven't defined an arc function yet, so we better do that first. So we need to define sort of a shape to make a circle pieces. Basically, each piece is like a pie piece, or you can maybe look at it as like a slice of a bagel if it has a hole in the middle, which these ones are gonna have. So D3 will do the math for us. We just have to create an arc with the svg.arc constructor and define its outer radius and inner radius. So the outer radius is basically how big it is on the outside and the inner radius is how big it is on the inside, which we'll see really soon. Now that that's all defined, for each G element that we made earlier, we're going to append a path and we're going to use the arc function we just defined to define that path. Now we're also going to, well, let's look at that. Da, 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 pretty impressive. Well, we just have a bunch of sort of black looking uh, pieces, you can't really tell what's going on there. So let's actually give each of those pieces a color. So D3 will make colors for us automatically as well. It does a lot of stuff automatically for you. So we're just, we're gonna define a color uh, palette and we're, that color palette's going to be category 20, which is one of the couple of cal color palettes D3 offers. And that's a function. So if I lo look at that function, if I say color, so it returns a different color based on what number I pass in. So if I pass it a one, then it gives me that color. If I pass it a five, it will give me that. And it goes up until, that's right, you guessed it, 20 before starting again. So we'll just give each of those elements a fill. And the fill, we're just going to pass the value itself to the color since each value is uh, a convenient number. And we'll refresh. And look, it's a pie chart. So that's about all there is to it. Um, that's all we're gonna cover in today's pie chart tutorial. So we've covered a lot. Using this, you can build the basic components of a pie chart. 